Welcome to Tamaram Studio. This video continues the series of essential techniques, essential brush strokes for watercolor. We will talk about the technique that's called painting wet on wet. I will be painting a landscape, a fairly easy one, because I want us to concentrate on paint application, not on the difficulty of form. I will sketch it out though just very, very lightly with a pencil, just to give myself a few guidelines using 300 pound watercolor paper and I did not speed up this video so you will see the whole process in real time and have a good understanding how quickly or how slowly I work on this painting and how it develops in real life. And of course since we're painting wet on wet I am going to spray my paper from my spray bottle and I'm going to use a soft dry brush to distribute the water a little bit to make sure the whole surface is wet. We will start painting with the sky. This is what this technique, this paint application is most appropriate for the skies. And because I don't want the sky to run all the way down through the ground area, I'm going to just very slightly blot the water on the bottom part of the painting with a clean paper towel. The first secret of successful wet on wet painting is to have large enough brush for the size of paper that you're using. If you watch my videos, I'm sure you've heard me say that a lot. If you use a tiny little brush and you try to get a smooth wash for, let's say, the sky like I'm doing now, or water, if you're painting a seascape, or any large area, it will be very hard to do with a tiny brush. You might get streaks. It might not hold enough paint and water to cover the surface. The paint can also dry before you cover everything. And also if you try to add paint to certain areas and you accidentally use too much water, you can get kind of an attractive water blossoms, those cauliflower blossoms. So the brush needs to be suitable, big enough for the size of the paper that you're painting on. And you can also see that I have a couple of rolls of painter's tape under my painting board and my paper is at approximately maybe 5-10 degree angle just to help the paint to slide down and mix and create that beautiful even wash that makes watercolor such a unique and amazing medium. More intense brush strokes can be easily added to painted surface as you see me doing now if we use sufficient amount of pigment and not too much water. Like I said, if you drip water on your painted surface, you will get water blossoms. Let's continue working on the sky. Paint all these beautiful transitions to yellow, pink, purple. As you see, because the paper is wet, the colors blend together and I'm able to get the soft transitions between different colors, no lines. And that looks exactly like the sky that we see in the reference photo. And I'll mention here real quick, if I needed clouds, I could take a piece of paper towel and blot some of the paint while it's still wet and that would look like distant clouds. I see some questions online, how do I do clouds and watercolors? So that's one way to do them is to lift paint when you're working wet on wet. I decided not to do clouds, to just follow the reference photo and we will have a cloudless sunrise here my inch and a half flat angled brush is a very good tool for landscapes and for a lot of other types of paintings because as you see with it I can paint large surfaces but I also can paint those sharp pointy shapes that sometimes are needed. To paint that distant land, that peninsula that's sticking out, I am using slightly more intense color as you see. I am picking up a little bit more pigment on my brush and simply having just a little bit more pigment than water on the brush creates that illusion of a solid mass instead of air, right? Instead of the sky. Another thing we can do is you see me doing now, I'm lifting paint, I wash the brush, I dried it on my paper towel and I'm lifting wet paint to create a lighter area. This is also a very important technique which is easy to use when we're painting wet on wet. If you lift paint before it dries, it will be that much easier to lift it with a, a dry brush. Not completely dry but with a damp brush I should say. Okay, let's paint the bottom portion, the ground. And you see, I'm not connecting these two areas. I'm not allowing the paint to run into the ground area. I'm using yellow. If you want a more defined border, I'm sure you know the rule of watercolor is that paint goes where it's wet, where there is water. So if I have a dry border between two painted areas, they're not going to mix. If you want them to mix, you need water. 
I describe all these techniques, including dry on wet paint application that I demonstrated in a previous video when I painted a colorful spring bouquet. I'll leave you a link to that video in the description under this one. I talk about wet on wet painting and some other techniques in an ebook that you can download from my website absolutely for free. The link will be in card and also in the description. It's called Watercolor Brushstrokes Guide. So if you want not a video but a PDF reference, an ebook reference to watercolor brushstrokes to study it some more and maybe use it before you start a new painting to figure out the plan for your painting, please go to xeniainis.com and download that ebook absolutely for free. But to paint the foreground, I'm using different shades of green that I have. I have under sea green, which is a dark, cool green. I'm using cascade green, which is also cool, but um, a little different shade of green. As I often say in my videos, the exact pigment totally doesn't matter. I'm doing this to get visual interest, variety of tone. The foreground is in shadows, so some sort of a cool green works well here. If you don't have cool green, you can always cool off the green that you have. Let's say sap green can be easily cooled off with a bit of uh, blue or purple. And that will work for this painting perfectly well. I need to paint that distant forest that we see in the reference photo. Of course, it would be hard to do with the big brush that I started with, so I switched to a smaller brush, half an inch brush, same flat angle shape. I am using it on the area that is damp. The paint that I applied did not dry completely, but it's not as wet as when I started. And the reason I want to do this is that the tops of the trees, it's not a hard line, it's a soft edge. So the paint runs a little bit and mixes with the distant background. It creates a more natural look, more natural edge on those um, on that line of trees. It takes a little bit of experience and a lot of patience <laughs> to wait for your paper to be just the right dampness, let's say. But the more you paint, the, the easier for you it it will be to judge if it's time to apply next layer and start working on details or you have to wait a little bit. You see, I laid my painting flat. I took out those rolls of tape because after paint is applied wet on wet, we want to stop it from running and mixing. When we have it where we want it, we need to lay the painting horizontally and let it dry. After the first layer of watercolor dried, you see it lightened a little bit. We can add some details and we can finish our painting. You see some turquoise seeped from my drawing board into the paper, but it's okay. It will be covered by a frame anyways, if I decide to frame this painting. Before I paint the details, I wanted to show you how to correct mistakes in the painting. You see the trees kind of ran into the grass a little bit, so I'm taking a flat, damp brush and I'm gently rubbing out that area. If you didn't do it while the paint was wet, and it would be hard actually to do it when the paint is wet, it's very easy to do it when the painting is dry. So if you see some mistakes that you made and you think, oh, I need to fix this, just leave it until everything dries and then take a clean damp brush and rub them out and make the correction that you need. I'm thinking the bottom landscape looks kind of stark, so I'm going to add maybe some flowers or maybe it's like dry grasses or something. So I mixed upper pink with some new gamboge, created orange, and I'm going to apply it on dry paper. And here I'm showing another way to create softness and to kind of paint wet on wet in reverse order. I applied wet paint on dry surface and I'm spritzing it from a small water bottle to soften the edges and make it look more natural. Of course, the flowers are not going to be like really defined spots, they're far away. So I softened them and I picked up excess water with a dry paper towel. In that way, you can also create soft edges in watercolor painting. I need to make a small correction, those trees. I didn't quite get into that corner, so I'm using a small dagger brush to connect those trees together a little bit better. And of course, to paint the details, I will use a small brush. This is quarter inch dagger brush. Let's paint that human figure that we see in the reference. I'm going to move it a little bit. 
I don't want it in the center. I want the focal point to be offset because I have something else I want to do to this painting. Kind of put my personal touch on it. And we don't have to copy the reference photo. So there will be a lonely hiker there on the hill. It's very easy to paint that figure against the light. Just a lot of pigment. And you see, because I need a defined edge, I don't want that figure to be soft or bland with the background. I am now painting wet on dry. The detail I wanted to add to this painting that I thought would be fun to add would be some birds. I have a video where we practiced uh, painting bird shapes and we actually added them to a landscape. I think it always brings a lot of movement, a lot of energy to a landscape. So I'm going to paint a few on this one as well, just to make it more interesting. Make that hiker not so lonely and give him something to look at need to kind of figure out where those birds are going to go, what will be the best location for them. I think this will be a good one. And again, very saturated paint, basically no water on the brush and just a few brush strokes. We don't need to paint too many details because those birds are way in the distance. We will not see any details on them. They will be just basically contours against the light. And I think there should be four of them. So with the hiker, that will make five components of the focal point. It always, odd number always looks better. Let's give our foreground even more detail, even more visual interest with a little bit of splattering. You know, it's I like that technique. Maybe let's darken a few shadows on the foreground to bring it forward to us. When we increase contrast, that area starts coming forward. It appears that it's closer. Also balances the top and bottom because the birds and the hiker are so dark. We need some darkness in the foreground as well. So when I look at my reference or if I'm painting outside, I look at my subject and I ask myself a question. Do I need a hard edge or I need a soft edge? And that determines if I'm painting wet on wet for soft edges or I'm painting wet on dry for hard edges. In the description to this video, I also left you a link to my watercolor beginner class from Zero to Watercolor Hero where I talk about everything about painting watercolor. There is a preview video that you can watch on my website to learn more about that class. I hope you check out that link and consider purchasing this class if you are interested in in-depth study of watercolor painting. And this landscape is finished. Let me know in comments what you think about wet on wet technique if you use it a lot in your painting or only sometimes. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamarov Studios channel.